Hey, what's up? Hello, everybody. And thank you for probably listening to our debate analysis, our debate reaction. We're doing this right after the debate. So the thoughts are fresh in our minds. They're kind of marinating. You might be listening tomorrow. But anyways, it doesn't matter. We're here to tell you what we think. So Drew, how are you first off? And what are your takeaways? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, I'm excited to talk about whether or not we got bingo because that was a fun side thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, so, you know, first off, um, I think just it was a better debate um, over policy than the first one, right? They had the chance, both candidates had a chance to kind of talk in specifics about certain things that I actually don't think we even got like almost hardly any specifics in the first debate, right? So, look, on the issues of race, you know, Trump – noted exactly where he thought he succeeded in that topic. You know, he talked about uh, working with, uh, you know, um, Representative Tim Scott and his providing funding for uh, HBCUs um, or, you know, so that was like a specific thing, right? That was a specific thing that he thought was evidence that gave credence to his claim that he is the best for blacks since Lincoln. Um you know, Joe Biden will talk to specifics about his, you know, more specifics about his you know, health care plan, his Biden plan, his uh, climate change plan. And I think the the moderator and the debate setup allowed for us to get deeper a little bit, albeit not much, but a little bit deeper into what actual policies and what evidence these people bring to support their claims. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, like my first takeaway is probably the same as yours, is that it was nice to actually hear both of them talk. Right. And our pre debate analysis or like takes, I think, was that we both thought that this could actually hurt Biden just because he's been known to have gaffes. And obviously Trump does, too. But I think he's a better public speaker, at least right now, than Biden, just because he knows exactly what he wants to say. And whoever's writing his speeches is quite good at that. But in this, I was actually quite surprised like the initial takeaway is that it was civil and it was actually nice to have both of them muted i think coming into this debate there was a lot of question marks about re like whether this was actually going to work or if trump was just going to walk over to biden's mic and start babbling still you know and it was kind of funny to see trump biting his tongue like yeah there were so many points <laughs> yeah especially the first half right there's the first half I think I even said it live. It, it re literally reminded me of like old school debates, right? Like the John McCain Obama mm -hmm. debates and stuff where it was like one pro one side is very still and like maybe writing notes and the other side is just speaking to the American people. And that's like what we were used to. And then, you know, it's been so, mm -hmm. it's been so different recently, but it was kind of a bringing back of that. I think the second half got a little messier, right? Trump kind of got back into like the, yeah. excuse me, excuse me kind of thing, you know, and they got a little bit more at each other's throats, but it never got to the, the sheer chaos we saw in the first one. Well, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I mean, I think I think I, I understand why some conservatives, especially Trumpists, were worried about Trump being muted, because let's be honest, that is part of Trump's like entire political success is yeah. his, you know, I would almost say the opposite of nuanced, his kind of just direct attacks and his kind of free balling like he's a bull in a china shop, you know, or he's an orangutan in the Trump Tower. That's what I would that's what I would call him. And so I almost do think that if you take a orangutan out of their element, it's going to be difficult to get the same response. And so part of me is glad because I, I think that Biden actually I was wrong where I said that I think that if Biden talks more, he's going to struggle because actually the more we heard from Biden tonight, my biggest takeaway was that Biden represents America or he wants to represent America and Trump wants to represent his base. And that came time and time again, where Trump talked about how, you know, he gauges success as a unifier. He's like so many wealthy people are doing well. It's like, but there's a lot of non wealthy, struggling, poor people that are not doing well. Right. And so to me that the more Trump talked, actually, like because my take was wrong at the beginning of this debate, which was that the more Biden talks, he's going to shoot himself in the foot. But I saw the opposite. The more Trump talks, he does shoot himself in the foot. And I think finally people might have seen that just because. Biden came off as clear and cognizant, and it's it's just interesting to see. But also now, I think the right argument would be is that this scenario isn't good for Trump because he's muted. He's not allowed to act like an orangutan in the Trump Tower. Yes, he's he he he. Um, 
like I thought it's the same thing, right? We had, we 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 talked about how we both thought like, oh man, Biden given two empty minutes of talking, he's going to have some stumbles, and of course he he did, right? I mean, he did stumble a little bit, but it really wasn't that bad, and and he he was able to have these very poignant moments, you know talking about coronavirus and how people have empty chairs at their at their di- you know dinner tables he had very poignant moments where he was able to get out a clear message and talk directly to the american people um which i yeah. thought was strong um and you're right that trump trump wasn't able to come out swinging which he which he used effectively against hillary and argue arguably less effectively against biden in the first debate because again you know Polling, again, flawed as it is, polling showed that Biden won the first debate. Not by much, not by a huge majority, but most people thought Biden did better in the first debate. And I thought Biden did better in the second debate. You know, I was more like in, in the middle on the on the first debate. It was, I could have gone either way. This one, I think Biden came out really strong. Um, he appealed to the empathy of people. He looked directly at the camera to the American people a lot, whereas, and I mentioned it live in reaction, Trump was talking to the, the, the either the moderator or to Biden. He didn't really have a chance to like connect with the American people. And even when the moderator gave him that layup of like, "What are you going like, to talk to the American people? What are you going to do?" Um, what was it regarding you know the um, what was it the economy? I forget the exact question. Um, but it was like it was like talk to the American people. Like she tried to lay it up for him, and and he immediately said, "You know, he had eight years and he did nothing." He didn't take that moment to talk to you. He didn't take a moment to talk to me. Um, and so right. I think that I think that Joe Biden succeeded in his message he was trying to get across because he mentioned it multiple times. Is you know I'm going to be an American president. I'm going to be a president for all Americans. I'm, I I represent you at home. Um, whereas Trump was going off about like character assassination and everything's unfair to me. I don't think those are winning arguments. Right. I don't think those are winning arguments anymore. Trump in 2016 won on being an outsider and the establishment failed you. But now his argument is everyone was unfair to me and I couldn't get anything. You know, I didn't do everything because I had, uh, you know, Russia hoax, Russia hoax and Hunter Biden. I just don't think people care. I really don't. Yeah. I mean, you and I were talking about this off the air and text messages. And, you know, I think the facade has been lifted or the the shade has been lifted from Trump because in 2016, like you said, he was an outsider. And a lot of people probably didn't know a lot of specifics about who he was. He was just talking a lot of bullshit. And uh, and now it's like, I mean, obviously the last week, it kind of looks like Trump is a tyranny of the minority candidate, you know? And we talked about that with Mitchell last week where, you know, the the silent majority to me is more like the loud minority. And Trump is kind of the face of that. And it was interesting seeing him try to, you know, put together a comprehensive message for the American people because his campaign is not for the American people. It's for the forgotten Americans. And I'm not trying to discredit that because we have a problem. And I think part of his rhetoric is correct. But unfortunately, his rhetoric isn't actually appealing to the people who do want help. It's appealing to the people that are angry and isolated. Mm. And I, I think time and time again, that's kind of what his message is. And over the last week, we've seen it. He's, you know, his supporters are cheering for 12 more years He's talking about how he's going to flee the country if he doesn't win again. That's stuff that comes from authoritarians, man. And, you know, I was hoping race like race was an interesting part of this for me. And I I wrote this down and I I just want to read what I wrote at the time, because, you know, I think they tried to give Trump a chance to say something good. And it's true. He didn't say, like, I have the Proud Boys on standby, you know, so I I guess if we're starting with that, it's good. It's a pretty low bar. But yeah, what I've noticed. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, it's a very low bar. But what I've noticed is that Trump talks about race like your uncle at dinner talks about race he hasn't experienced systematic racism and he knows a lot of black people so obviously it doesn't exist like i've just noticed that trump talks about minority issues like there's something exotic you know like he talks about well i had a black person sit at dinner with me i had i i had someone talk to me about how good i am for the black community it's like he's just so out of touch and like even when he's given a, a softball and doesn't say he wants minorities bad or he wants the proud boys to stand by he still can't answer it in a way that makes sense yes it's always very like someone comes up to me and informed me i had no idea like that he like he often plays ignorant a lot right i mean that's part of his rhetoric you know people always tell me all the time 
It's never it's never him with the original thought. It's people come up to me and sell things. And even when he talks about race in America, is that same rhetoric of like, oh, like you know, black people come up to me and tell me things. And it's like, it's like I don't know, man. Like, like edu- like educate yourself. Like it, it shouldn't just be like, oh, I have no idea what's going on. But then Representative Tim Scott said I did everything great, so everything's good. <laughs> and it's like, dude, like there's so many more. Like it's so much a. Like it's a it's a full history and a nuanced topic that takes a lot of it's like really, you know you have to be careful and it's complex and and and, and you're mm-hmm. right like you may not have experienced these things so you have to have empathy for people and gain knowledge from others, but I feel like to him it's like you know oh I heard one black person tell me I did a good job so I must not be racist or I must not have mm-hmm. any issues or I must not I must not have to reflect farther on this issue. Um, you know, I don't know what's going on in his mind. I, you know what I mean? But I certainly know that white supremacists love to vote for Trump and that that's a problem. And I know that white supremacists are active and gaining activity in this country. And racism is certainly not over. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I totally agree. You know, and, and just the I, like the last thing I'll say is that I picked up a lot of this and we kind of talked about it already. But like he kind of has two ways he goes where he talks about how he he's either the most victimized, like, you know, everyone's out to get him. Or at the same time, he talks about how he's the least. So if you're looking at a graph, it's like extreme most or extreme least. There's no like nuance. Like, like, like you and I could probably say we're not perfect on a lot of these issues that are brought up, right? Like all of us have had struggles growing and learning about nuances in our society over the years. But with him, it's either I'm the most victimized by the FBI or I'm the least racist person you know. And if you're at a dinner party with white supremacists and one of them's like, I'm the least racist person you know, it's probably not a good rhetoric. Yeah, and I don't, I mean, hear, I don't I hear mean, normal Drew, people I'm, I'm, say yeah. that. No, no, not at all. It's like, it's like I could say, I'm the least insomniac, you know, like I have sleeping problems. And I could, I, don't, I mean, that's a horrible example, but I could say I'm the least willing to stay up all night or something. I don't know. I, I don't know where I'm going with that. So, anyways. well, it's just like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the best or worst at anything in my life. You know what I mean? Like I'm, right. like I'm, I'm pretty good at playing drums. I'm not the best. I'm not the best drummer that's ever drummed. <laughs> and 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 you know, if someone's not as good as drumming, I'm not. They're not the worst, right? Like I don't deal with hyperbole, and I and I make I make a point in my life to try not to. And I, and I, yeah. you know, and I, and I make sure that I look at the nuance and try and put on the shoe of the other foot. You know, I do believe strongly about things, but there is nuance in this world. Of course, you have to look at the world with nuance. And you're right that Trump just doesn't. And I think, and again, back to the debate is, I think that showed, right? Joe Biden seemed to be more nuanced, seemed to be more empathetic. I think it's a big thing <laughs> right now when people are scared of how crazy the world is to come off as empathetic and concerned about your well-being and and trump is not good at being empathetic he's good at throwing punches Mm -hmm. at at this you know at at his enemies but based off the first debate it doesn't seem like that works anymore it worked a lot better on hillary clinton when she was an easy punching bag but joe biden is not as easy of a punching bag and 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 when they tried to get him with that like whole like dirty corrupt hillary thing with the hunter biden emails it falls flat I mean, the fact that, you know, you do have intelligence agencies basically saying it's a Russian plant story that shouldn't be taken seriously. Um, you even had Fox News. Fox News had a, an opportunity to report the story first, and they denied it based because it didn't mm-hmm. meet their credibility standards. That's why the New York Post put it out. And only after the New York Post put it out did Fox News then cover it because it was a secondhand, oh, we're covering the story of it breaking, not the story itself. So like, but it didn't even meet the the journalistic standards of Fox News. So I think the Hunter Biden story falls flat. I don't think it's gonna. I know we'll see if I'm right or wrong, but I don't think it's gonna pull any big points one way or another. And I think that Trump lost this debate because of that. He needed to swing hard, and, yeah. he, and he didn't. Yeah, and and the last thing I'll say, and we'll get out of here, is that you know I, I said it during our debate coverage is that it's like if you have a complimentary dessert and you're promised the tiramisu as the October surprise, you know, your dinner surprise and you get a scoop of vanilla ice cream. That's what this felt like to me. You're expecting a really good dessert and nothing comes out of it. And, you know, to your point about the New York post, this Rudy Giuliani story and kind of just four years of Trump. I think what we're seeing of Trump is four years of no nuance. We're seeing a guy who takes everything at face value and allows that to run. And that's why his base, I think, has gotten so, in my opinion, disturbing. 
yeah. lot of the things his base are saying are disturbing because there's no nuance. Everything's taken with face value and it's destructive. And I saw Biden as someone who understands nuance. And I'm a Republican who has cast my ballot for Biden. And that's why is because I'm sick of four more years of a lack of understanding and a lack of discussion and just face value stories. If the New York Post put it and it's bad for Biden, Trump supporters and Trumpists are fine with that. And I think that's why we need to get this guy out of office. All right. Well, I don't I guess we might have gotten bingo because of the refusal to answer question. Maybe with like, <laughs> I mean, you could I'm, I'm sure both sides would argue the other refused to answer one of the questions. So we'll just mark that off for both Biden and Trump. True. Because I bet everyone will think the other did it. So that does mean we get bingo down the middle. Right. Or I'll go a different color because I've been using red. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of messed up. I haven't used MS Paint in years, but I think that middle one is all there. We had the free, we had a wild tangent. We had the Hunter Biden story. Biden says folks, and then refusal to answer questions. A couple honorable mentions was the $750, Trump's tax returns, um, China, <laughs> um, direct insults, the beta moderator, and then the 2 million lives stat. Um, all right, so that's going to wrap it up. Um, do, what do you think about the debates, guys? Um, this was the final debate before we head into the you know, the election. Um, again, almost 50 million people have already voted, um, and there doesn't seem to be any indication of a lot of um, undecided voters still left. So do you think this debate <clears throat> will move anyone? Do you think uh, Trump will gain his much-needed three-, four-point swing back? <sighs> We'll see. Uh, let us know your thoughts. And as always, stay tuned to the Tonic Accord. We will obviously be covering the election, but we will continue to bring you guys uh, global and comparative politics news as well.